<clears throat> Hello, everybody, once again. Matt Weaver here. Today is May 20th, 2020. It's my third anniversary today, so I'm going to have a shave. Uh, so thanks for joining me. Um, we'll hang out, we'll have a shave, maybe tell a joke or something, and uh, we'll go from there. So today I'm going to do a cheapo shave. I've seen people doing this recently. And so um, I'm going to go with some cheap gear today. Implements of Destruction. This cost me nothing. It was my first first straight razor I ever owned. It was made by Double Duck for another manufacturer. Anyway, that's the first straight razor I ever owned. I just recently re-honed it. Um, so this is going to be my first shave with it. The cream today, I'll tell you today I'm using a cream, is Coats Superior Rose for sensitive skin. This is a discontinued cream. I think it was last produced in 2007, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you can still buy it. Uh, somebody bought a huge stock of it when the company shut down and they are selling it on the website. Uh, coatscream.com uh, this little travel size tube which is 1.7 ounces costs $1.70 if you buy 10 or more of them the shipping's free uh, and it comes in a variety of scents see if I can remember them all sandalwood, almond tea tree, lime rose lavender um, I've tried three of them the rose the lime and the tea tree did not care for the tea tree to me it smelled like um my grandma's basement <laughs> like a really nasty vetiver i'm not a big fan of vetiver uh, but yeah it didn't smell like tea tree to me it smelled like a basement so i think i gave those away i still have maybe one of the limes and a couple of the roses uh the scents on them are very light you know you know this cream's 13 years old but the scent is, is light. The performance is outstanding. It's one of the best creams that you can use. And, you know, the thing costs $1.70. So you can't beat it. Uh, the brush today is Razor Rock Plus Soft with their Italian flag handle. Um, again, this one didn't cost me anything, it was a gift. Uh, from Caleb McCullough, actually, uh, if I remember right, he sent me this. Um, I'm not a big synthetic guy, but most of my bore brushes are custom made and, you know, cost me a lot more than nothing. Uh, but even if you were to buy that brush, I don't know if they sell that exact brush anymore, but you can get a Razor Rock Plus Soft uh, synthetic brush for you know, 13 bucks at Italian Barber. So, you know, if you're into the synthetics, cool for you. Um, I don't know, this doesn't really go along with the, the cheapo shave, but, um, you know, it's, it's still, I think it's 15 bucks, but this is a massive 500 mil bottle and it's the Epsilon Blue Mediterranean, which is one of the knockoffs of Floyd Blue. So that's what we're going to do today. Shaveridge iced tea. Plain iced tea, no sugar. I was born north of the Mason Dixon, so we don't fucking put sugar in our tea. Just those fucking hillbillies down south do. And this is cheapo too. Look, it's my Walmart. Tumblr. Paid nine dollars for it. I've had this thing for years now. So let's get to it. I'm just gonna grab my towel. And you know, I, 
at the brush soaking in this old, I think it's made by Surrey uh, shaving mug. This is my wife's grandfather's mug. Um, you don't need to soak a synthetic. I just kind of do, do it out of force of habit. Um, so um, I squeeze the brush out. Some people will take the cream and squirt it right on top of the, the knot. I like to take it and kind of smear it on my face. And then after that, I'll go to the brush. And I use probably more cream than is needed. But, you know, soap is not expensive. Even the expensive stuff, like your Martin de Condres and the like, um, are still, you know, you could use a you know, buy a puck of Martin de Condre for, you know, I don't know what they cost, 60, 70 bucks, and use it every day for, you know, six months before you ran out, if not longer. I know guys who have had pucks of Martin de Condre literally for years, and they haven't even put a dent in it. So, in terms of cost, her shave, you know, something like Martin Conry is really not that expensive. The initial investment is, you know, fairly substantial, but you know, dollar seventy or seventy, you know. So, and like I said, this stuff's new old stock. The guy who um, bought them keeps them in a temperature control. Um, storage locker so you know they're not being exposed to the elements like I said uh, you know I didn't I, I didn't you know I wasn't in the game back when they were trying these things uh, or back when they were producing these things and you could buy one that was brand new off the shelf the sense light you know it's not complicated it's rose But, as you will see, it's a great performer. Like I said, I'm not a big fan of synthetics. Anybody who's watched my videos or knows me from the various Facebook groups knows I pretty much use bore brushes. I have one Badger brush, which was made by uh, Matthew Marting years ago. And I believe it has a golden nib 24 millimeter badger knot in it. I'm not a fan of that one, but I'm not necessarily going to sell it because, you know, for sentimental reasons, it was my first custom brush. For me, bore brushes just produce a higher quality lather than any other fiber. And that's just my preference. I know guys out there absolutely hate them. They're too scritchy or whatnot, which is fine. You know, that's your preference. You know, synthetics do a good job, don't get me wrong. They, uh, you know, even one like this, you know, I remember when the Plasson was basically the only synthetic on the market. I never used one of those, but you know, they were fairly, comp com fairly expensive. Now you can get a excellent synthetic brush for, you know, less than 20 bucks but for me the boar is king you know they're they've got plenty of backbone depending on the knot you get uh, i'm a bigger fan of the omega knots 
specifically the Omega Pro knot. It's got plenty of backbone and um, once the tips break in, it's really soft. Um, I actually did a test. I took my Badger brush and my bore brush. It was a well broken in bore brush. It was an Omega. And I had my wife hold out her arm. with her eyes closed. And I brushed both. I took both brushes and, and ran them across her arm. Asked her to tell me which one she thought was softer. And she picked the boar brush over the badger. So, you know, something to think about. It needed more water in my lather. The really good, uh, easy way to find out if your lather is hydrated well enough, especially if you're using a straight razor, is when you go to rinse off the lather and whiskers off the blade if it rinses off really easily then you've got a nice hydrated lather if it doesn't then you've got to still have soap on your skin that hasn't been hydrated yet so you know keep that in mind Sorry, I need to adjust this a little bit. You guys can't see what I'm doing. There we go. Let's see if that's a little better. This edge needs some work. I'm going to have to go back to the stones on it. You notice I go across my chin like this. That's because it's it can be difficult to get the angle right if you're going this way. Um, down. And I found since I've been doing this. That. It can be really difficult to get a good angle. When you're going downward around the chin. Alright, so let's put a little bit more water in this ladder. It's always a good idea to kind of add just a, you know, when you're lathering up for your second pass, you know, as the brush is sitting there on the counter, the lather and the brush can dry out. So it's always good to add just a little bit of water, give it a shake, and then go back to your lather. That'll kind of rehydrate the lather again.
<laughs> I got up my nose. Do the old farmer's blow. How about a joke? You guys want to hear a joke? I've got a couple of them. Neither one of them is work friendly. So, if you've got small children around, you may want to tell them to leave the room. How come Ken and Barbie never had children? Answer, because Ken always came in another box. Not my joke. I didn't come up with that one. I didn't come up with this next one, though. If you're offended by this joke, well, you know, don't be a pussy. Yeah, I definitely need to go back to the stones on this. Go back to my finisher, probably. All right, so, next joke. How is an Italian woman like a tollway? How, <laughs> already fucked up the joke. How is an Italian woman's ass like a tollway? Because it's usually wide, flat, and you gotta have some money to ride it. <laughs> that one makes me laugh. All right, well, this is a, a subpar shave at best. The edge on that fucking razor just needs some work, but I'll go back to my neck here and kind of clean that up a little bit. <laughs> Call this the Jimi Hendrix Pass. Yeah. Alright, I'm going to pause this, rinse off, and I'll be right back. Alright, welcome back. So I just rinsed off. 
put a little uh, witch hazel on. Humphreys, this is the lavender, no, lilac flavor. <coughs> Post shave, Epsilon Blue Mediterranean. I've never smelled Floyd Blue, um, you know, they don't make it anymore for some reason, and, you know, new old stock, you know, unopened bottles go on Flea Bay for like 50 fucking bucks or something, and I'm just not going to spend that much on an aftershave, but from all the reviews I've heard, this Epsilon Blue Mediterranean is a pretty close Facsimile, pretty reasonable facsimile of the Floyd Blue. And like I said, this huge 500 mil bottle was like 15 bucks or something. The rest of the implements of destruction, I gotta freaking take this thing back to the Hones. Made by, that says A. Coletti, which I believe is Angelo Coletti. And it, like I said, you can see the two ducks on there. So this, I know this was made by Double Duck for probably a, a local barber somewhere. Uh, coats, rose, shaving cream, razor rock, plus soft, shaving brush, shave ridge, little northern iced tea. So, that's it. Shave of the day. May 20th, 2020. I'm Matt Weaver. Thanks for watching, and remember, folks, happy shaving.